What is going on guys, my name is The Benster and welcome to this new Gary's Mod series that I'm going to be doing which basically is every single tool that you get in stock Gary's Mod I'm going to be going through and telling you how to use it the most effective way. Not every single way you can use it but the most effective way. So the first one we're going to start with is the one right at the top and that's the Axis tool under Constraints right at the top here. <clears throat> so if you click on it, the default things you'll get are zero force limit, zero torque limit, zero hinge friction, and no collide is unchecked. That's how you'll get it as you click on it. Um, I've been messing around with this for a bit, and I've found if you move force and torque limit off zero, the axis just breaks straight away, and it's useless. So keep force limit and torque limit on zero at all times for the most effective use of this tool and hinge friction is very dependent on what you want it to do so the higher the friction the more resistance obviously so if you said you had a door and you wanted to make it open slower then up the friction simple and no collide is if you're doing it as part of a build it won't um, clip into anything else that's on the build and things like that so it'll make the whole thing move freely no matter what it interacts with so if we, just to give you an example I'm going to spawn in a door here very simple door. Um, this is one of the uses you can use it for. You get your tool gun and you left click underneath on the bottom and it will bring up this sort of ghostly shadow of a door moving around. And if you then left click again it will place it down. It won't be, it's not frozen. It, well it will be frozen. If you froze it in the air it will be frozen. So if you just unfreeze it just to make sure and this will now rotate around the point you've just clicked which was this corner here so if we walk into this door it turns and it will carry on turning because the friction is on zero until it naturally slows down so that's the one use you can have for this um, you know I don't know what you would use it for but it can be quite useful for making base doors and like large doors that open and close things like that the other um, side of this tool is if you right click on the bottom and then right click somewhere else. You won't get this ghostly thing. If you right click then sort of somewhere else there, then unfreeze your door, it will be rotating around that point. So the distance between your first and last click is where the, it will rotate. So you could make things float I guess or whatever. I don't know when that would come in useful but that's that's the other side of the click. I guess you can also do it on the floor. So if you have something laid down you right click on there and then you right click somewhere else on the floor if you then move it it'll spin in like a big circle effectively around the two points where you've clicked and that's pretty much everything you can do with it um, I would suggest always having it on no collide just because it makes your build a lot simpler and it'll sort of troubleshoot any problems going and anything going wrong straight away rather than you having to do it sort of specifically towards the end of your build that will just eliminate any problems um, so I would always have that on check and other than that that's pretty much everything you can do with the axis tool so stay tuned for the next video in which we'll be looking at the ball socket so thank you so much for watching guys and I'll see you in the next one